Who's it on? All right, everybody, let's stand. Good to see you here this evening. And number 69, Thy Loving Kindness, which is our welcome chorus. Thy Loving Kindness, number 69. Bible school. We're doing some motions. <laughs> All right, number 405. My faith has found a resting place. 405. <laughs> Well, it's good to have you all here tonight and just want to uh, remind you that the Life Banquet is tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. If you got a ticket for that or if you signed up with Paul Cook or Sheila Cook about that, I don't think there's any more space available. But if you would uh, pray for that event tomorrow night, that it will be for Abby Johnson as she speaks and that the money will come in that they need. But most importantly, that new people to the ministry will be able to come and be able to hear about the the gospel sharing ministry they have there and then the the giving the word of god out and the truth of the sanctity of life i want to encourage you ladies to please sign up for the ladies spring uh luncheon or fellowship whatever you guys call it it's going to be um at a restaurant and i didn't uh, is that um Boxcar Grill. Okay, I'm not planning on going, so I didn't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, please sign up for that if you haven't done that already. And I know that that uh, time's coming up really quick. If you weren't here on Sunday and didn't get a bulletin, please get one of those on your um, way out. And be um, looking on Facebook. If you have a Facebook account, there is there are some supplies that are needed for decorations. And they're really coming together um quickly and it's encouraging. I pray for Susan Woods and Sheila Cook as they're leading 
Uh, the decorations for Vacation Bible School is really exciting, but there are some supplies that are needed. So if you have a Facebook account, you can look at that. If not, we'll have a bulletin insert on Sunday with uh, those items. And I'll try to get an updated list of what you already have and take that off. But uh, we'll have that available in the bulletin this week. Uh, we are tonight going to uh, pray for our missionaries, John and Karen McPherson. They are retired, but still serving the Lord. On May 18th, uh, John will be going out to uh, Wyoming again and be doing phase two out there at the uh, Pinedale, uh, at the First Baptist Church of Pinedale, and then also helping another church in Utah uh, with, I can't recall what he said, but I'm going to have the letter read on Sunday night, so you'll you'll get to hear all that, but he's going to stay busy. He was praising the Lord that Karen had a close call with losing her eye with the weed eater, uh, but the Lord spared her, so we're just praising the Lord for that, but I'm really thankful that they are serving the Lord, and they're busy uh, going out. They went to Red Cliff Bible Camp um, in northern Wyoming, I believe, uh, during the winter. He had to, he actually had to go through waist-high snow to get to where he had to get um, to, to to work on the plumbing there uh, so the camp was ready, and that's when Karen had that accident. But anyway, you guys will hear about all those adventures, and I, we were just talking about that, weren't, weren't we, in WT, that people retire just to go to work? <laughs> so that's exactly what the McPherson's have done, and if you are led to give towards their expenses, their 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 livelihood is taken care of. That's why we don't support them monthly anymore. But if you'd like to give some money, maybe towards John and Karen's ministry this summer, you can feel free to do that through the church. We're going to pray for the Pregnancy Resource Center, then also for Kirsten Mayer. She's going to be uh, moving to North Carolina at the well. Actually, I think. She was supposed to retire at the end of April, so I think sometime this month she should be coming down uh, for that, so be praying for her family. And then Paul and Sheila, you got on the prayer list again. I guess you need more prayer. Now, I don't think that Ann knew that I put your name down those couple of times. They did that to John and Anita, I think, too. Uh, or no, it was Sue and Karen last week, so that's okay. I'm sure you need more prayer, so we'll be praying for you. I know you have a burden for a couple of your kids, so we'll We'll pray anything else on your heart you want us to pray for. Mm -hmm. Yes. Appreciate you highlighting that. I read that in the news too. Um, just pray for that um, that legislation. I think it's going to the Senate, correct? Now it's been passed in the House. Um, and you know, for some of us, it may not be as conservative as we'd like. But I remember being there in the state house and talking to a couple representatives that they wanted it to be that way, but that it it might be that they would have to include for rape incest and all that other stuff and that's what was included in there but still um that's not what we agree with as the church here but we I, i'm glad that it's at least going to be protecting babies lives up to 12 weeks um is what i read so that's a step in the right directions versus 20 weeks which is the current law and then there's another bill that's being legislations going that about about obscenity that uh, child obscenity exposure that makes that le uh, legal to expose uh, pornography and obscene uh, images to t uh, to young people. I thought that was already on the books, but you know, anyway, uh, I guess it I guess it wasn't. So we need to just pray, and I think it has a lot to do with some of the uh, perverted lifestyles that they're trying to expose our young people to here in North Carolina. So let's pray for that to pass as well. All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and pray for these things. And then, Brother Cook, you can come and lead us in our next hymn. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come into your presence with singing, but also uh, with our bur burdens that are on our hearts. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your loving kindness, that it is um, greater than life itself. Thank you, Lord, that you... Um, 
are you have a steadfast love for your people going all the way back to the old testament even to today you've promised never to leave us nor forsake us and we just so thankful we don't deserve any love uh, from you we don't deserve any mercy from you any grace we just thank you lord for who you are that um, you're so good to us your children thank you for your everlasting love and that your love never fails and that you're kind to us even when we are not kind to you lord i'm so glad that you don't stop loving us when we uh, go astray when we get distracted lord when we're uh, focused on ourselves Father, I thank you so much that you continue to love us and you want to encourage us. You want to guide us and lead us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. And so, Father, I just pray that you would encourage us in this prayer meeting as we come to you, trusting in your loving kindness as we cast these cares upon you, knowing that you care for us. Father, I just ask that you would encourage um, and guide Paul and Sheila and thank you for the ministry in the church and we do pray for their children that they've been burdened for and you know who they are and father we do pray that you would uh, just guide their steps and we thank you lord for their good heritage their godly heritage and i pray that you would just continue to give um, paul and sheila the right words to say to encourage and support them and i just pray for their uh, for some of them their homes their families we pray you'll bless their homes and uh, Father, we also ask that you would bless the Pregnancy Resource Center here in Statesville, especially the banquet tomorrow night, that you would provide the monies that are needed for this uh, larger facility to house the, the resources for these uh, men and women who are in crisis. They are um, at a point where they need to look up to you and they also need help find uh with material things and their their storage needs for the ministry there and there's other needs as well and father i just pray that you would provide through the the donors that might come to the banquet tomorrow night but even if that that goal is not met uh father i ask that you would just allow different ones to connect with the ministry who have never been exposed to it and heard the testimonies of these folks who have trusted Christ or they've heard the life-changing message of not only the gospel but what the word of God says about life and father I pray you encourage the staff there at the pregnancy resource center I pray you'll protect them as well as um, there are very evil people uh, not only in high places but in our community too that really would wish them harm i do pray that you would protect them from uh evil people that may want to harm them and i do also pray that you would uh just work in these uh the, these legislative processes with the with the bills that are being there have been sent to the senate uh, father i ask that you would allow um righteousness to be legislated uh, according to your word father that it would be upheld and lord um, we're sad that you know the majority couldn't agree where your word agrees but we thank you lord for this small victory and we do pray that the work will not cease uh, that the unborn will be protected in north carolina we also do pray for the McPhersons, and we thank you for their faithfulness to you, the joy they have in serving your son, Jesus Christ, and, and, and serving you, Heavenly Father, trusting in your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the energy, the strength that you have given them. Thank you for the safety that you gave John out in Wyoming. I thank you that he can go back out there with Karen and visit family as well. We just pray that you would just help them with all the connections that need to be made that you would supply for each one of the needs and lord that you would use them even while they travel to be God, uh, witnesses for the lord jesus christ we commit the rest of this prayer meeting unto you lord we just desire for your will to be done for you to be exalted and we pray these things in jesus name amen
King Eternal. 483. Birthday girl in our presence, Miss Betty Stroud. Can we still call you a birthday girl? So happy birthday to you. Make sure you wish Miss Betty a happy birthday. <laughs> yes, happy birthday, Betty. I didn't know this was the day. I, I missed that. Well, if you'll turn to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I want to just take one of the little segments there. If you're familiar with Psalm 119, it's um, divided up by the Hebrew alphabet in every eight verses. Um, is, it starts with the same Hebrew letter. And so we're going to be looking at verses 169 through 176. Uh, each one of those begins with the Hebrew letter Tau, if, you, if they show that to you in your Bible. Uh, before we begin, I'm going to ask the Lord for help. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to open up your word tonight. Thank you that you have not left us without your word, so we can know who you are, what your will is for our life. Father, I ask that you would help me to be so clear. I, I pray that you would help me to encourage and that your Holy Spirit would take your word and lead us and encourage us, comfort us, and uplift us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, it, this uh, last week we went to the Pregnancy Research Center, my family and I. Not everybody, just Titus, Crystal, and myself. Went over there and kind of helped for the bank. We're not going to be able to make it. We, we have a conflict. Our kids have a spring concert tomorrow night, so we'll be doing that instead. But um, went over there to volunteer, and I have confession that I need to make. Uh, Crystal drove up se over separately with uh, Titus. If you remember last Thursday, it was raining. And so I was trying to rush over there. It got a little delayed and wanted to be prompt. And when I went down Signet Hill Drive uh, to the stop sign there, man, it was just ongoing. It was just traffic going boom, boom, boom. And people are just like taking forever to turn onto Signet Hill Drive off Simonton Road. And so I'm waiting for this one guy to go, and then the next person's going, you know, creeping along, and I'm making sure no one's going this way. And I think I have it, and I turn out, and there was another person behind, you know, that person, and he was creeping along too. And it made me feel so vulnerable. I mean, when you feel like you're about to get hit by a car, um, that, that can really wake you up quick, right, and make you feel so vulnerable, but I believe the Lord was watching out for me, and 
you know, it was raining, but it wasn't pouring down. And that person, like I said, was going so slow. I don't think if they slammed their brakes, they would even get close to me. But still, it was, you know, it was really concerning. I'm glad no one was coming the other direction. But that person went around me, and then finally I, I was able to go. Um, but, you know, sometimes we have circumstances like that where we feel vulnerable, especially emo- uh, emotionally or spiritually. And, and even when we're going through physical trials as well. But I'm so thankful that the Lord is with us every step along the way. Um, he hasn't left us. He hasn't forsaken us. And um, we can receive his help even in those vulnerable times. But we have to seek the Lord's help. And that's exactly what the psalmist is doing. I believe it was King David who wrote these. Some people may disagree with me about that, but... Uh, This is the last little section here. Let me just go ahead and read it in its entirety. And I'm going to quickly go through this. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy, and thy law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Uh, the psalmist, whoever it is, is seeking the Lord's help in this time of vulnerability and he address he goes straight to the lord and he says let my cry come near before thee o lord o yahweh he he goes straight in prayer to him and directs the lord but the lord in the in these eight verses is very clear that as he's praying his confidence is that god has given him the the word of god And that the word of God is going to lead him and help him in this situation. Aren't you so glad that we have God's revealed word, written word for us? Yeah, I mean, we can always cry out to God and ask ask him to help us. And we can directly pray to him like the psalmist prays here. And I understand the psalmist, if it was David, probably had a copy available to him. But if it was the average person, probably didn't have a copy of it uh, before them. So whoever that is and whatever their situation is, they would have had to memorize God's word and have it hidden in their heart. But the fact of the matter is, is that God has given us, he has revealed himself in his word so he can lead us, but also enlighten us to who he is. And so let me uh, just divide this up of how God uses his word to help us. First of all, I'm so thankful that we have God's word and, he, and we can... He, use, he uses it, not us, but He uses it, His Spirit uses it to help us triumph in times of vulnerability. Again, verse 169 says, Let my cry, my, my, my cry out in desperation come near before thee, O Lord. And the request is, Give me understanding according to thy word. Now, there's several synonyms in each little section of eight verses here. These, these same words are used over and over as synonyms, but they actually have nuances to them. But you wouldn't pick up some of it in the English translation. Uh, in verse 169, the word, word, you got what I just said, is the Hebrew word devar, which is talking about it's God's revealed word is how that word is used okay so he's talking about give me understanding according to what you have revealed he's he's wanting understanding but also he seeks deliverance let my supplication come before you deliver me according to thy word different hebrew words someone's at the door johnny if you can let him in and it is the hebrew word imra which is talking about the content of God's word. For once, I get you up to unlock the door and the person has a key. <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. 
false alarm. Anyway, but thankfully, God has given us his word so that we can have a victorious Christian life. We don't have to live like a victim. We can live like a victor. We can overcome times of vulnerability and discouragement. Uh, we can go to Lord, the Lord in, in prayer and say, help me according to your word. Use your word in my life to lead me and guide me. Now, how does he use his word to help us in times like this? Well, I think he gives us insight about how to react to certain situations. In this psalm, uh, King David, he mentions, um, oh, I, I think I took that out of my notes. But anyway, he, I said King David again. I keep telling you who I think wrote, uh, who God used to write this. But um, the what I'm getting at here is that he's going to God's word for help in this, and he's given him insight, I believe, but also definitely confidence, confidence in this situation. And then in the next couplet, uh, verses 171 and 172, uh, God uses his word not only to help us triumph over wickedness that we may encounter uh, in spiritual warfare, spiritual battles, but also he uses his word to help us testify. I love this. Verse 171, my lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. What does the word statutes mean? It means engraved, something that's engraved, uh, something that's permanent. God's moral, moral laws are engraved in, in the Old Testament for us. You know, he, he, he engraved um, those, those, um, ten, those ten commandments, which would be an example of that even though I'm not sure if that's exactly what we're talking about here, but we're talking about statutes of morality uh, for the people of Israel that should be true for us as well. Things that are just and right that we still should follow in the New Testament. Uh, many of them are taught in the New Testament anyway. But anyway, my lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. Aren't you glad that God has revealed what's right and wrong? That we don't have to guess. We don't have to do trial and error. And we should praise God for that. You know, God, God uses his word to help us in times of vulnerability, but also it equips us to be able to testify, to be able to praise his, his righteousness before the unsaved or the saved, but also to not only praise God before them, but to proclaim, to proclaim the excellence of his word. If you look at 172, it says, My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. All your commandments, what you've told me to do, they are righteousness. And he wants to proclaim them uh, to those that are around him. And so, you know, you, we have our times of testimony on Sunday night, and I love the testimonies um, of how God has done something really neat in your life, or he's answered prayer. But I want to encourage you to also, and I've done this in the testimony time, <clears throat> is to take opportunity to testify, according to <coughs> verse 172, to my tongue shall speak of thy word. You know, we should testify of his word as well, and speak of the righteousness of his commandments. And that, I mean, that's, this is an example of what we should do in our testimony time as well. And so I'm so glad that God has given us his word. So it helps us triumph over wickedness, also testify of, um, of him and of his word. But then also God uses his word to help train us. In verses 173 and 174, it says in 173, Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. Let thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. And I'm so glad that um, God uses his word to equip us. You know, the word precepts here is talking about restrictions. Restrictions. Kids hate restrictions. But why do we give our kids or grandkids restrictions? Because we care about them, Right? And that's, that's the wonderful thing about God's care for us is he uses his word to uh, train us 
So, and part of that is restricting us from doing certain things. Uh, verse 174, I have longed for thy salvation or deliverance, O Lord, for thy law is my delight. And so he, you know, we need a seat to not only follow his restrictions, but also his instructions for us as well. And that's what that word law is talking about. It's the word Torah, actually. It means instruction. And so we need God's instruction on a daily basis. I just, I just love it that we have God's word available to us where we can go to it for help, you know, to triumph over wickedness, but also to testify of his word. And I forgot to um, allude to this when it earlier in the, in the last couplet, it was talking about in verse 172, my tongue shall speak of thy word. And that's talking about begin to speak. But even in the verse before, it says, my lips shall utter praise. Utter is talking about to bubble up, bubble up. And I, I, I thought about a tea kettle. Any of you guys have tea kettles at home, like the old-fashioned ones, right? So you put, you know, you fill that up with water, which you can kind of imagine is the word of God that you hide in you, the teapot. And God uses that heat, right, to... Um, you know, to, to cause the word of God to bubble up inside you. And then you got this small little spout, right, that comes up. And what happens? That water bubbles and that water bubbles. And then, then the steam comes out and you hear, ee! well, hopefully your praise sounds better than that. But I mean, you know, you have a little spout too, right? Your mouth to praise God uh, with. And, and I just, uh, I, I wanted to share that illustration. I thought it was really cute and, and very um, picturesque of what should be going on in our own life. But then, uh, lastly, let's go ahead and look at the last two verses here. Uh, let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. When we talk about judgments here, we're talking about the judgments of God. This is a synonym for the Word of God. We've looked at several already. The word, word, obviously, is a word for the Word of God. Then statutes, and then commandments, and then precepts, law. These are all synonyms for the word of God, and so is judgments. Now, how is judgments a synonym of the word of God? Well, actually, God's word contains the judgments of God. And I don't mean like God's going to judge you, but testimony of how God judged people in the past. Those kind of judgments. So we can read, that's why it's so profitable to read the Old Testament, because you see how God's judgments have played out in the past. You know, where God morally uh, and justly responds to his own people, or even the people that are not his people, the enemies of his people, um, with the, you think about the Egyptians. Aren't you glad that the, the picture there of salvation where God saved the Jewish people from Egypt out of slavery and wiped out those that pursued them. But even after they passed over or went through the Red Sea, they wandered for 40 years in the wilderness, which is very typical of our Christian life, where we struggle to believe God. And then even when we are progressing through and we get to where God wants us, there's still enemies there. You know, we get to where the promised area that God wants us to be on, but it doesn't mean it's not without battles. There's a battle to fight, like in Canaan, you know? And so, very picturesque in God's judgments of how he can slay giants, he can uh, divide rivers, any kind of obstacles to our path, he can uh, scare away thousands of uh, men, soldiers, mighty men. And you know what? He can do that with any enemy, any foe, any obstacle you face as well. And as we look at God's judgments in the past, that encourages us. It helps us. That's what verse 175 says. And so let me look at the first part. He says, let my soul live. And that's talking about not live as in, I don't believe, being preserved, but revived. I'm vulnerable, I'm discouraged, I need revival. And actually in this psalm, there is one verse that says, Lord, quicken me according to thy word. And, and that's exactly what true revival, it's not, the, it's not getting up in a big show or the preacher, 
you know, or the singing. It's according to his word. It's the Holy Spirit using. That's how revival really does occur. Let my soul revive, be revived, and it shall praise thee. And, that, and don't you want that? Don't you want that? If you want daily revival, you have to be in God's word. You have to seek help in the scriptures. And then also, and let thy judgments help me. And how does his judgments help us? They warn us. They warn us. You know what? Israel had the law of Moses. And I know I don't have to keep the law of Moses, but I know that if I forsake the, what God says is right, you know, that I am really going to be disciplined by my Heavenly Father, that He is going to chastise me because He loves me and He's good. And then lastly, in verse 176, not only is He going to revive us and warn us, but then protect us. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Aren't you glad that you have a good shepherd that won't abandon you? And he's given you his word so that you can follow his steps. And when you have his word, again, just to review, you, he will help you triumph over wickedness, testify of his word, but then also train for faithfulness. That's what I was getting at earlier. But then lastly, trust in his working, that he will revive you. He will warn you and he will protect you using his word. I hope you uh, are encouraged that you're not alone. God wants to help you. We just got to seek his help when we're vulnerable. Praise God we have his word, right? Yeah. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to look at these eight verses and be encouraged. We pray you'll bless the rest of the prayer meeting and even as we pray, Lord, that we would be able to pray more fervently, uh, trusting in you and your word, but also praying your word back to you, but most of all, asking for your help. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, uh, was there any, can, Johnny, can I ask, no, is nothing on there? Okay, good, thank you. Um, let me go over a couple of new requests. Uh, Shirley Greider is Paul's aunt. Prayed for her last week. If you pray for her, then Gilda Haithcox. Has anyone gotten an update on the medication issue? If she can have her surgery soon, did Megan give an update in Sunday school, Paul? It's still going to be this summer. Okay. Okay. I got an update from Jan Shade that her treatment today uh, went well. The uh, oncologist was encouraged with what he is like even her well-being, but also very um, hopeful that this, this, the, this tumor is going to shrink so they can remove it maybe in July. So please pray for Jan. And uh, she's still coughing. They're going to take her off uh, medicine and see if that helps. But she's still dealing with that. Continue to pray for John Shoemaker as he recovers from um, that that amputation, uh, it was uh, some problems there. Sheila Weaver mentioned that. I didn't get an update from Gracie. I meant to call her today to find out how that went. But if you would just pray for Sheila as she's recovering, Sheila Weaver. Um, it was good to see Sue Pope here on Sunday, but continue to pray for her. And just, you know, pray that she'll be able to get off the oxygen soon, but also just for her spirit as she has to live on the oxygen right now. So, um, did anyone get an update from Jim Parks? I wanted to email him too. Has anyone heard back? Okay. So he had an echocardiogram last week, and I haven't heard anything since then. So, okay. Well, they need to do the vascular surgery of the carotid artery. <clears throat> Okay, so anyway, if you're not aware, Jim Parks has a blocked carotid artery. I think it's like 90% or something, so it needs to have that cleared. So he has that vascular surgery coming up. Um, Stan told me he's doing well. Uh, he's doing pretty well. Things are healing up on that cancer spot on his head. John Gammon went to see him yesterday, and he's recovering pretty well. He was in some pain there, but um, yeah, he, he, he just having a hard time resting. <laughs> he's, he's out of work right now. So if you'll just pray for him, though, as he's 
recovery after having that cyst removed. Uh, Chase and Killian are, are looking good, but they're going through some diagnosis, uh, diagnostic things, and that's not resolved yet. So if you'll just pray uh, for those results. If you'd pray for Karen, uh, Kim Gammon led her to Christ um, a week ago Monday, and so just pray for her discipleship. I'm hoping that Kim, Kim can uh, begin discipling her there. It's just a neighbor in her neighborhood. Um, if you want to hear the story, I'll tell you some other time if you're curious. It was pretty awesome. Uh, pray for the Michael Dunlop family. Got an update that Michael, he, he lived through his ordination grilling. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's a praise. And then, um, and then also the visa came in, praise God. But he has a cardiologist appointment coming up so on Friday. So if you'll just pray that all goes well, uh, just so he's all set to go overseas with his heart condition. Continue to pray for the Warwick's family, the Isbell family with losing loved ones. Um, Johnny, are you still doing your class at night? Okay. Okay, continue to pray for Johnny Boland's class online. Okay, I think that's it. Well, let's go to prayer. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to keep them on. But thank you for that update. Um, just for those on Facebook, that Steve Horton is uh, the, the, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but anyway, the heart procedure that was done on, on him was successful, and he's doing much better. So praise the Lord for that. All right. At this time, we'll go into groups and pray, and then I'll come up and dismiss prayer meeting.
Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time that we could pray. And Lord, it's just a blessing to just to come into your presence and pray with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And Father, you've heard our prayers. Um, Lord, we just pray you'll answer them according to your will. We trust in your good will that it will be done and accomplished and that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You are dismissed. Thanks for coming out tonight. Thank you.